Well, there was also a bad thing with the old, in quotes, 4140 that you, you didn't. Japanese, was this the Japanese 4140? No, no, this was the Ryerson. Ryerson Rychrome is what it was. That was what they would call it. And the reality was that they sold it turn ground polished 4140, and it had some other specs on it. And what, when you got right down to it, it wasn't necessarily 4140. What it was was steel that was hardened to specifications where it met all of the physical specifications of 4140, which is fine if you're not going to heat it up again. And we never had any trouble with this stuff when we welded it either. It worked okay. But if you were trying to do some reheat treating where you thought you were going to heat treat it again, it might be on the far ends of the spectrum where it didn't work. And the reason I say that is a friend of mine bought a bunch of it and he made some really exotic sockets out of it for going up to Prudo. And when he got through hardening them, they got too hard and brittle and broke. And that was when he did some research into it. And we found out that it wasn't really 4140. It was a 4140 replacement. So there are some things that happen in this industry and it happens today too. Um, you know, if you're really, really, you know, if you're General Motors and you're buying 4140 or 4150 or 4340, whatever you're buying, and you're going to make a whole bunch of crankshafts or something with it, the first thing you do is you test it when it comes in. It doesn't matter what they told you you bought. You just bought 52 train loads of it, and you're going to test the first couple hundred pounds of it and see what it is. I think that would be giving GM too much credit, thinking they would use something. Well, I just in general, whoever, <laughs> whoever.